another top 10. Actually, it's not a top 10 this time. It's a top 20. Yes, I went there. A top 20 indeed because of this topic is really top 10. But this is definitely top 20. It's the top 20 what if sports scenario in history. Okay, first up, number 20. LeBron James actually goes to college. LeBron jumped from high school to the pros and of course Cleveland got lucky winning the Travel lottery and got him. But what what if he went to the NCAA? The question on everyone's mind is what university would have went to? He probably would have went to like Akron or Ohio State or Ohio. If he went one year in the in the NCAA, Orlando would have got him. Chicago could have got him in two thousand six. And could have made him the next Michael Jordan. And in two thousand seven it could have been Portland or Seattle and Portland wouldn't have felt bad getting Greg Oden. They didn't need Greg Oden. But who knows? Seattle could have taken Oden over to Kevin Durant. Orlando took Dwight Howard. That was good for them. Chicago took Derrick Rose. Not Derrick Rose, was it? Was it Derrick? It can't be Derrick Rose. No. Uh, who did they take? I can't remember. But anyway, he probably, LeBron James probably would not have won a title at all. Anyway, number 19. The Cowboys. Decided to keep Herschel Walker in 89. Now, of course, Dallas in 89 was 1 in 15. They were doing badly, and they decided to trade their only major star, Herschel Walker, to Minnesota. That had a lot of draft picks and all that. The Dallas media thought that Dallas was mortgaging their future with the trade with Minnesota, but a couple years later, they flip flopped. It helped Dallas more than Minnesota because of the draft picks. Jimmy Johnson used his draft picks to get Emmett Smith from Florida, Darren Woodson from, uh, I would like to say Purdue. I might be wrong about Darren Woodson. And others, like Leon Lett, that would have helped the Cowboys win three titles in four years. Oh, and Russell Maryland, too, I think. Would have been them. Minnesota, of course, couldn't do anything about it. Um, but if they kept Walker, Maybe teams like Philly or San Francisco would have been more dominant. And whoever had Emmett Smith in the draft. But anyway. So yeah, that was a big trade that sunk Minnesota. Number 18. What if Mike Tyson actually beat Buster Douglas? Now here's the thing. Mike Tyson should have kind of had a chance to get Buster Douglas. If you remember, in round 8 of that fight, Buster Douglas was saved by the bell. But the officials were angry. But Tyson's corner was angry that that it should have been called a knockout anyway. But anyway, if Mike Tyson would have won, he would have been a respected champion. He would have had a lot of belts. And Mike Tyson probably would have retired as a as champion going undefeated and getting himself out of trouble. He might have been in trouble after his career ended, but you know, it did, his career would not have been interrupted by that prison stay. Number 17, Frank Robinson stays in Cincy. Frank Robinson was traded from Cincy to Baltimore because the Reds' management, I think it was Frank DeWitt, William DeWitt Jr. said that he was an old 30. And in that season, in 66, Frank Robinson made him regret it by winning not only the MVP, but the Triple Crown, home runs, adding average, and RBIs. You lead your league. Not the majors, but you lead the league. And Baltimore won the first ever title. Remember, the St. Louis Browns, the original Baltimore team, did not win. I tell you at all. He would give Baltimore three more pennants, another World Series, although they could have won a few other ones in 69 71 if they were careful, and became the first black manager in Cincy. However, Robinson, if he stayed, would have helped Cincy become the big red machine earlier than expected. 
probably winning a few World Series titles before 75, which would have stunk Oakland up. And Reggie Jackson may not have frozen so high that the Yankees would have picked him up from Baltimore. But anyway, since he could have dominated the 70s better than what they did. Well, I mean, 75, 76 was still great. Number 16, Michael Jordan stays in the NBA in 93. Of course, there was controversy about the Michael Jordan move. Was MJ forced to retire because of his gambling problems? Well, Charles Barkley admitted he lost $2 million in one night. But maybe that. Hmm, strange. He only had nine years in the NBA. Well, when he's his first retirement, he only had nine years, but he won three straight titles. Um, he, well, we all know Michael Jordan would have retired. Well, retired because he wanted to follow his boyhood dream of playing baseball and have his dad watch him. Of course, his dad passed away in July of '93. That could have factored in the decision. So let's just say he didn't retire. Chicago could have dominated '94, '95. Houston would have kissed those titles goodbye, and Clutch City would have been Butch City or something like that. And Chicago would have been aiming for the record of the Celtics' eight straight titles. But, on the other hand, the fr franchise wouldn't go after, like, Dennis Rodman, and it would have given Utah a few titles. But anyway, it doesn't really matter. Number 15, Drew Bledsoe doesn't get injured. We all know that second game against the Jets in 2001, Bledsoe goes down for the Patriots and the unlikely backup mixer Tom Brady had to come in for the Pats and lead them to the AFC Championship. The strange thing was that Bledsoe actually got into the AFC title game against Pittsburgh and helped them win the title. And Tom Brady got to start in the Super Bowl anyway. We don't know what Brady would have been like if he was just staying there. Brady probably would have been traded away from New England. You know. New England probably would not have been a Super Bowl dynasty at all. Hmm. Number 14. The Black Sox don't actually throw the World Series. We all know that in 1919, the White Sox, there were eight members throwing the game, throwing the series to Cincinnati. Actually, there was... The truth of the matter is that there were seven who threw the game and one person, I can't remember, who was the guy? Uh, there was the, I think it was the third baseman who actually knew about this. Dickie Kerr? I don't remember who he was. Or left, it wasn't Lefty Williams. One of them actually was banned because they knew about the incident and didn't tell um, management. And of course, Comiskey's management is kind of, is one of the reasons why they threw the match because Comiskey was a penny pincher and he took advantage of non-educated players. So anyway, the White Sox would have been a decent team in the early 1920s and Joe Jackson definitely would have been in the Hall of Fame for sure. Number 13, Len Bias actually doesn't die. We all know about Len Bias, Maryland star, picked second overall by Boston. I can't remember who Boston traded. What team would have had the number two pick if it wasn't for Boston swiping the pick? I think it was a, I know it was a trade because Boston won the title. Why would they be in a lottery? But anyway, it was picked second after, after Brad Doherty goes to Cleveland. And anyway, within a day and a half, he dies of a drug overdose. And of course, they changed the idea of casual drug use and all that. At that time, they actually were hunting down a lot of black people with cocaine and all that. It was kind of a race thing. But anyway, the Celtics were great, but with bias, they would have someone else to stave off the Lakers and Pistons. It's amazing to see Len Bias face Michael Jordan in matches. We do realize, yeah, when the, after Bias died, there was a curse of him, and then 22 years later, they won the title. Number 12, Lou Brock stays in... Chicago. The Cubs decided to trade Lou Brock for some reason. Well, they wanted to trade him for good pitching, and Ernie Brogio had a 21 season at that time, so they decided to go after some pitching. And Lou Brock, of course, one of the best stolen base kings of all time. Oh, the best in the National League, because Ty Cobb and Ricky Henderson played in the American League. Although, Ty, uh, Richard, uh, Henderson played for the National League teams too. But anyway, 
they kind of traded him because Lou Brock was not good defensively. And, you know, they could, they were right. But, unfortunately, Virgil choked when he came to the Cubbies. The biggest effect would have been that it would have been, it would not have been St. Louis who would have jumped back from that on Philly's collapse in 64. It would have been probably Cincy. And St. Louis would probably have not done well in 67, 68 because Lou Brock wasn't there to help with the speed. And the Cubs probably would have won in 69. The pennant. Well, at least going to the NLCS against the Braves. Number 11. Gretzky doesn't get traded. We all know this in Canada. I mean, what the heck? Toglinton was just traded to get some money. And it was a seismic shock when Edmonton traded him to Los Angeles. Including the deal where, well, Myron McSorley, Mike Kruszynowski, Martin Jelena. I didn't know he was an active player at that time. I knew he was in the trade. And some first round picks in 15 mil. The NHL might not have had a good profile. And especially in the southern U.S. Because if memory serves me right, there weren't that many people who wanted teams in the southern U.S. That actually started a big boom. Well, if Gretzky wasn't traded, L.A. would have sunk badly. And Tampa and Phoenix and one other teams. And Miami, well, slash Florida. Would not probably not have gotten a hockey team. Because th there wouldn't be a lot of hockey um, push. Edmonton could have done well and maybe given the NHL a good kick in Canada. But anyway, that trade was made. It helped the southern United States with teams. And that why Dallas and, I guess, Arizona got teams like that. Number 10, the 94 strike doesn't become a strike. Or at least gets fixed that there is a season. In 1994, baseball was doing great. They had... People chasing records. Matt Williams, Barry Bonds, Griffey Jr., and Frank Thomas were chasing the home run record. And Tony Gwynn was chasing Ted Williams for the 400 mark. And, of course, that big bitter dispute over money by the players and owners in a strike. And no solution was found after a month of trying everything else. And, the tra and of course, the strike killed Montreal off because Montreal didn't have a lot of payroll and didn't have too many playoff chases. Except for 2003. But anyway, had the strike been averted, we could have seen a new home run record over Maris. It would have helped some long-term numbers. It could have been Montreal who won the World Series, and everyone knows that for sure. And perhaps baseball would have been tougher on the performance-enhancing drugs of McGuire and Sosa. Because some people said they had to let it go because they were trying to get baseball back up in popularity. That they couldn't stand basketball, football, and I guess maybe even hockey to surpass them in popularity. After all, numbers in 90, attendance numbers in 95 were crumbling. It would have avoided a black eye for the entire sports world. In effect, the 2005 NHL strike should not have happened. I mean... 94, there was kind of a season. 2004, 2005 for the NHL, there wasn't a season at all. Number nine, UFC. Doesn't he actually get off the ground? Now, we all know about UFC starting in 1993, about 22 years ago. You know, MMA, and MMA was around for many years. But pay-per-view market would have really suffered itself. But MMA is getting back on top. Number eight. Steinbrenner buys the Indians. Now, I had no clue about this. I really have never heard of this. But anyway, we know Steinbrenner was one of the best people in the Yankees history. He almost bought his hometown Cleveland Indians. Yes, Steinbrenner was from Ohio. And legend had it that he signed Drew Henson to a Yankees contract to prevent Drew Henson from playing for Michigan against Ohio State. But Henson played for Michigan as is. With Steinbrenner buying Cleveland, Cleveland would have pushed would have pushed hard in the American League and maybe become worth their champs once in a while. But maybe Steinbrenner would have been better with the Cleveland media than the New York media because New York's media is more hostile than Cleveland's. The Yankees without Steinbrenner would have been taking a lot it would have been a lot longer to rise out of their late sixties brush with hurt and maybe falling flat to the mats so yeah king george 
New York. I had no clue Star Banner didn't buy Cleveland. Couldn't buy Cleveland. Number seven, Michael Jordan gets drafted by Portland. Or in hindsight, anyone but Sam Bowie. Now we know about the 1984 draft. We know Houston and Portland. There was a coin flip. That was the last year of the coin flip before the draft draft lottery. And Houston won the coin flip, so they got Hakeem Olajuwon. They could have taken Michael Jordan. But you know what? Houston dropped Hakeem Olajuwon. He was from the U of Houston. And let's not say that Hakeem Olajuwon's a bad person. He's a good player. He's a fantastic. He was a fantastic player. He probably would not have. If you take Olajuwon out of the equation, Houston might not have won a title or two. So Portland traded, uh, passed on MJ for Sam Bowie, who is this spectacular center from Kentucky. But uh, Sam Bowie's legs just did, gave on him. And Chicago decided to grab Michael Jordan. If Portland got him, they would have done a lot be better. With MJ and Clyde Drexler, Portland might have been contenders back in the late 80s, early 90s. Portland did go to two finals in 1990-92, but they lost to Detroit and Chicago, respectively. And the Bulls would have suffered. And Detroit's dynasty could have happened a lot more. So anyway, Jordan would have had less rings in Portland. But you know what? He might have made Portland a lot happier. Number six, free agency doesn't exist. Well, we know about Kurt Flood's challenge for arbitration because in baseball, the reserve clause said that you belong to a team, that team, unless they trade you. So, of course, free agency, the big problem with free agency is that if it never happened, there wouldn't be a lot of strikes in major sports at all. Especially in baseball in 81 and 94. Number five, Magic Johnson actually becomes a bull. Now, people are like, what are you talking about? Well, here's the thing. There was a coin flip. We go back to the coin flip. And this coin flip, the Bulls were in a coin flip with the Lakers. Lakers win the flip, they get Magic Johnson. I forget who Chicago took second overall. Bob Lanier? I don't know. I don't know who Chicago took second that year in 79. Someone should help me out. But anyway, um, Magic would have been Chicago, but he wouldn't have had Kareem or Pat Riley helping him out. Anyway, the Lakers would have been good contenders. But maybe not as dominant in the 80s as they would have been. And Magic Johnson could have helped Chicago become a dynasty. And maybe Chicago would not have taken Michael Jordan at all in the draft. That is kind of strange. Magic Johnson and Michael Jordan would not have been together anyway if Magic stayed with Chicago. Man. Number four, the Red Sox and Babe Ruth. Now, the Red Sox, of course, sold Babe Ruth for $125,000 to the Yankees. And, of course, the rumor was that Harry Fressy, the Sox owner, needed the money. But it actually was an error because they actually learned that he was he had a lot of money. And he didn't really finance his probably play no 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 net with that money. Because that didn't actually come out. Well, it came out in 25, but that was five years after... There was a musical version of Our Lady Friends. That was the, the non-musical for Broadway players. Our Lady Friends became no-no Nanette. So anyway, Babe Ruth was a top-notch pitcher. And he actually could hit home runs. It was actually Babe Ruth's fault why he left Boston. Because, you know, he was getting difficult. He wanted salary raises every freaking year. And the Yankees gave him the money. So basically, New York could have got some... A few titles, but the mystique would not have been there because Babe Ruth helped the Yankees' mystique for Joe DiMaggio and Mickey Mantle. The Yankees probably would not have been legendary in the 30s, 40s, and 50s, and titles would have been more spread out. And of course, Boston would not have had so many years of heartbreak thanks to the trade. Number three, the New York, the the New York, the two big New York teams don't lose. New York doesn't lose two franchises in baseball. That would be the Giants and the Dodgers. Now, it would have been a seismic shock. LA and San Fran would have had expansion teams from scratch, and maybe they would not have benefited from a title. 
Now, basically, the factor was that the Giants, the Giants actually started the um, move to California move, movement first because they had the polo grounds that was decrepit, and you know, not everyone wants to see a four hundred uh, a center field with four hundred fifty feet and a right field with two hundred fifty feet. But you know, the Giants wanted to move to California and. The refuers say would not have gotten to California unless they had someone else. So Horace Stoneham kind of convinced Walter O'Malley to try to get to move the Dodgers to Los Angeles because that would have been an LA San Francisco rivalry. And of course, Giants and Dodgers were major rivals back in the 40s and 50s in New York State. The fact of the matter was that, of course, O'Malley had his reasons for leaving town. You know, Ebbets Field, everyone wanted to move to the suburbs for some reason. And, you know, Brooklyn was de was decaying. But anyway, Brooklyn would have got, the fans would have got the new stadium. And the Yankees would have had a collapse in quality and fan attendance in the 60s. The Yankees could have even moved out of New York. But I doubted it. But anyway, the Mets would not have even existed if the Giants and Dodgers stayed in New York. Unless the Yankees moved to the Unless the Yankees changed their name to the Mets. So, anyway. That was just amazing. Number two. The AFL doesn't compete with the NFL. You could also say, what if the WHA didn't compete with the NHL? Would that be bad? That would have, that's bad. for me. Even the ABA with challenging the NBA. Um, the problem is that there weren't too many baseball leagues that challenged Major League Baseball. Like, the Federal League in, the, in 1914-15 did. Honest to God, but that was the only one. There was a proposed Continental League in the 50s that would have had teams in Vancouver and Toronto, but because it was kind of a scare tactic to get expansion, it didn't happen. So the AFL doesn't have form. So, of course, it's doubtful that secondary markets like Jacksonville, Phoenix, Tampa, and even Buffalo would have got their own teams, unless, they, unless major cities moved their teams, like Los Angeles moved the Rams and the Raiders. We've been a year of each other. So anyway. The NFL wouldn't be this, these big clashes. And number one. What if the majors didn't accept black people? Oh, that is always the what if. I'm glad they did it when they did. Because there would have been a lot more race riots and all that in the 1950s. And all that. Why would baseball not have any black players? The one name that. The one big Negro League player that never got to play in the MLB was Josh Gibson, who once hit a home run out of old Yankee Stadium in 1934. What might have been if Josh Gibson had been there? I mean, I know that Don Newcomb and Jackie Robinson played in the Negro Leagues, too, but they played in baseball as well, so, yeah. I mean, then the U.S. would be more racist than people let on. You know what? Canada could have had a black baseball league. I don't care. Anyway, so that's it. I know it was in the top 10. It was a top 20, but you know what? That is a great list. I couldn't take anything away from out of it at all.